Okay. We're, we're praying Mr. for Grant Dorothy. Mr. Bill Kinnison. You can pray for both Aunt Dorothy's. Are we on here? Yes, you are. It's noon. You know, do you, do you think I just flip a switch or what? Yes, you can. You just start talking. <laughs> Good morning! <laughs> See? Welcome go. to the Gospel According to Kennison. Good morning, Don and Cheryl Morin. They're number one. Yeah, down at the bar, down at the racetrack, too. Oh, are they? No, I think Oh, uh, I don't know. Good morning, Jerry Nicholson and family. Yeah. Yeah, they get the whole family around there. And Barbara Grady. Good morning, Barbara. Yes. You I'm and in... Lem sending you all the love. You who? Lem and Barbara. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love They're two of my favorite people. Paulette Cup is watching. We, we go way back with them, by the way. I'm back. Jerry Nicholson said, welcome back, Sherry. I'm back. Oh, Lord. <laughs> good morning, Derek Kustra. <sighs> Kimberly Eisenberg, good morning. Well, if Kimberly's watching, Mike is watching. And you have lots of announcements today, so start talking before yeah, you Yeah, we've got business to take care of. Good morning, Danny James. Go we've ahead. got business to take care of to start with. And uh, I am, for the new folks, you are at the Gospel According to Kennison. And every once in a while I'll tell you about that, that title, and I'll do it now. Somebody said, had somebody this week asked me, so why do you call it the Gospel According to Kennison? I said, because it's the Gospel according to my understanding. And I told him, I said, I'm probably the only preacher I know of that would have the courage and strength to name a program the gospel according to me. But I think it's unique. I love it. I love it. Anyway, that's the reason that we are the gospel according to Kennison, and I am your, your host. I am the man, your illustrious host, Bill Kennison. Good morning, Paul Bergazi, all the way up in New York. You know, Sherry, you tell me we really got to get to it, and then every time I, I take a breath... I'm telling you, Jerry Nicholson, he says he's looking so forward to this every week. I do, too. I do, too. A lot of people do. But I love I loved Jerry. He's a good guy, man. He's been with us for a while. Good morning, Michael Mesmer. You better hurry up and start talking. I can talk faster than you. Well, that probably is true. But uh, good morning to Michael. Michael's got the life. Have you ever noticed that? He and his wife and daughter have the life. They travel a lot, but yeah, they but look, work hard. Not they work they, hard to play hard. But not, not only, they travel around and work hard. Sherry, where they go, every place they go is either a fair or, or it's a great place to be, and he gets to perform in that, and he is good. He's the best I've ever seen, by the way. And uh, anyhow, good, good morning to Michael. And Paul Bergazi, great to see you, Bill and Sherry. And, you know, he does so many great movies. I mean, I, he... That man stays busy. He really he stays, stays busy. busy. Good man. I, I love I love Paul. He said, you're looking good, Bill. Jack Friedman said, <laughs> don't forget to watch and like the YouTube and um, the YouTube channel. On YouTube. And Facebook. Yeah, and... Good morning, Mike Boyle. I finally, I finally, uh, I didn't know that I had not subscribed myself. So I finally did that, and, uh, and we encourage you to do that also. Uh, we got a few prayer requests. We, we're still praying for Lisa in her battle, and, uh, and then uh, Sue that had a uh, triple bypass, I believe. It was a triple bypass. And uh, Paulette with her knees and her back. Then Aunt Dorothy, what what's Aunt Dorothy besides she, being elderly? She's just having a love, just. Well, she's ninety. She'll be nine. She's ninety four. She's ninety four. Good lady, good lady. That lady, my entire life, that I or not my entire life because I didn't know her then, but I met her in the teens. She's all. She's always made room for God, and as always, she's a giver. Yep. She, she, you know, she did, and she doesn't have any money, Sherry, to really speak of. But you know what? I know of, of, of one ministry she gives $200 a month to. She's a giver. That's a secret. 
And then, uh, Sherry, we went to uh, uh, over to Dallas uh, this past week, and uh, we're very, we we're very thankful to God that we're here, and and Ginger's not making a couple arrangements because we were driving over there, and I, one thing about love about Texas, it's eighty miles an hour on on some of these freeways, and we were driving eighty miles an hour, and a little piece of wood, well, not a little, it's four by four. About a, about a foot long, and we ran over it. You ran over it. But you were in the car with me, so if I would have died, we would have died. <laughs> you, I'm not oh, even talking Lord. about that. And you folks tell her how you missed her, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you. But anyhow, and we destroyed two tires, and somehow we made it to the to, to get the tires replaced, and, uh, and the man said, you're lucky. And we didn't even know about the back one. No. We were so carried away with that front one. And uh, he said, you're lucky. You're lucky you didn't uh, roll this car, maybe hit somebody and get killed or whatever. So I give the praise to God for that. He takes care of us. He takes care of us. But we went over there uh, for the Farrah Fawcett Foundation that Sherry's been involved with now for, how many years have you been involved with them? Probably 10. 12, 15? 10, 12, I don't know. Yep. It's been a long time. Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, this this year's recipient uh, of the Fair Foster Foundation was uh, Katie Curick, who I got I was fortunate enough to again a few years ago spend the evening at another stand up for cancer with her, and we had we had such a great time. Except she made me go buy a shirt because the shirt that I was wearing the collar was all messed up or something. She said, "You know, why don't you go buy a?" A shirt, and so I did. And she remembered that, by the way, the, this the last year. But she was the recipient, and she is the one that also got started to stand up to cancer that you see everywhere. And she was the recipient of the Farrah Fawcett Foundation this year, and, it, and that was hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so uh, we're we're proud to be a part a part of that. Also, since it is. October 1st. I know, but I hate calling it Cancer Month. Yeah, every month to us, we work on every Isn't month. Isn't that the truth? But October, we just go into overdrive. There we are. Can they see that, Sherry? Yes. All right, that is a yard sign. And I love the yard. It's one of the coolest I've seen. And it says, the fight isn't over until there is a cure. The pink journey. If you would like one of these, uh, you can go at the bottom, actually. It says the paintjourneyfoundation.org www and uh, and these are $35 and there again I don't know about all the others I do know the pink journey every penny goes to the uh, cure of cancer yes we have a we give totally free mammograms we have a big bus truck that has state-of-the-art equipment on it and Sherry's on that national board and we go to the underserved underprivileged that don't have, most of them have no insurance and we actually give them totally free. Folks, that's where your money goes and I can tell you where it goes. Every dollar is spent for uh, raising awareness and, you know, the cure for cancer. It's, it's a damnable disease. Yep. But, it, and you can Venmo also, you can Venmo uh, at Pink Journey Foundation. Just about everyone that I have uh, sold these to. And I've actually sold quite a few. Yeah. Uh, they Ven every one of them but one uh, Venmo. So anyway, if you Venmo, let us know so we can get you your sign. All right. That sounds Jennifer Matthews. Good morning. Love Jennifer. You know Jennifer's got an interesting life, man. She is always. I don't know how many different areas, but she's always helped ever since I knew her. Actually, we the first time I met her was we were were remodeling the restaurant. They're in uh, Upland to complement our theater. And she came down there. I never met her before. Said, what do you want me to do to help? And, and we ain't talking about the theater. We were talking about a restaurant. And from uh, then on, we, were, we have become very, very, very close friends. I love her. She's so her. involved in the, which I love. Yeah, and the Native American and the Native cause. American causes and, and families, and oh, I just love it. Good morning, Gary Witt, Mary Zastro, Valerie Jasso. I won't say any more. Keep going. 
Yeah, but I like all these people. I know it. They're some of my favorite people. All right, we want to we want to teach Sherry with the last three minutes that Sherry left for us. No, you still have on this program. Minutes, Twenty minutes. Buddy. Well, we want to teach a little bit of on faith after doubt. Now, let me tell you all something. And start with this lesson. You're not going to hear that I know of. You're not going to hear another preacher, so-called preacher, teach this. I don't, don't ask me why. I don't know why. But they won't. They don't teach the things that we teach. I remember uh, uh, Little Finnegan. He's five years old, a grandson, and uh, they were getting ready to, to put him into school, and so they put him in a pre-kindergarten class. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was uh, roughly dominated by Russian children. And when I asked. Uh, when I asked Finnegan, I go, well, how did you like it? And he goes, Papa, they don't speak my English. And I, I just thought that was whole, whole, his so hilarious. They don't speak his, his English. And uh, that's how basically church folks, and not only, we can't just say church folk, people. They have, have been that way. And Afraid to ask questions. I want to get started on this. 65 million adults, 65 million adults in the U.S. have dropped out of active church attendance, and about 2.7 million people a year are expected to drop out of, of their active church membership. Their reasons for for dropping out, or they're, they're complex. They're not just simple. They're complex, but some leave because they begin to doubt God. Now, I'm not going to ask you if you've ever doubted because, man, we, that, that's, like the, that's like a word you don't mention around Christians. But some leave because they begin to doubt God. They begin to doubt the Bible. Or they've been, they've been uh, some of the doctrines and practices required uh, by their churches, they, they, they begin to doubt that. Many leave because they doubt the church, the synagogue, or the mosque, mosque as an institution worthy of their trust and their support. So they drop out. Whatever the focus of their doubts, at this very moment, hundreds of thousands of people are watching their doubts grow and their religious identity weaken. Well, that's, that's a big statement. You may be one of those people that's listening to us this morning. You may be one of these people. This lesson is for the millions worldwide who feel that their faith is falling apart. And we all have went through those stages and may go through more stages of them. You see... This lesson is for the pastor who feels that God is less tangible every time he preaches the sermon. Other words, it just begins to be happenstance that he just, you know, I got to do a sermon. And most of them don't, don't study their own sermons. If they're in a denomination, they have those sent to them usually uh, from headquarters because they want to kind of keep uniform what everybody is teaching. And so it's also for the young teenage kids coming to terms with their gay identity whose church tells them they are unacceptable to God. Now, I, I, don't, I don't care what your feelings are. Well, I do care about what your feelings are towards gay people. And uh, I don't think it should be that way. But no one should be declared unacceptable to attend your church. No one. I don't care what they do. I don't care what their sexual identity is. Should not be withheld from the assembly of the saints, so to speak. This message is for, this lesson is for seminary professors. Definitely. 
I went to Bible college, and uh, believe me, they need this lesson. It's for nuns. It's for youth workers. It's for Sunday school teachers. It's for the kids who dare to voice questions their mom and dads don't have the nerve to ask. And it's for the mom and dads who want their kids to be introduced to a more honest and intelligent kind of a faith. Now, I can't speak for the churches in and whatever that you grew up in. I can speak for the church that I did. And, and I, wa I want you to know that it's for all people who dropped out of religion long ago but still dream that there's a way for them to both be spiritually curious and intellectually honest. First, you must realize that questions, now listen, these are, these are, when I tell you to listen, I really want you to pay attention to that statement because it's very important and sometimes it's hard for us to accept. First, you must realize that questions in doubt are not, are not the enemy of faith. Although we've been taught that way, man. If you, if you're, if you doubt, you got to go back and get saved again. You backslid, according to a lot of folks. You see, religion has a, has given us questions that they can't answer. And I promise you, every single person listening to me today, somewhere in your life, you've had these questions like, what's wrong with me? Do you even hear me talking to God? Why don't you answer my prayer? Why don't you change me? Are you even there? Are you even real? Honey, I've had every one of those questions when I, when I was a, a young man, a teenager, I had every one of those questions. No one could answer those for me, and I become bitter. And I had doubt. I remember before my father died, I asked him what made him change his beliefs. Because I remember when I was a boy and then a young, young man, and I remembered how my father would preach and the things that he would say. And i got to be honest with you, as a child, I, I couldn't handle it. I could not believe that. I could, just could not take that. He would talk about the rapture, but very few people were going to make it. He would, he would talk about hell, and there's a lot of people, according to how he preached, and he could preach them very, very good. There's a lot of them going to hell. He would preach about the tribulation that you're going to come into the tribulation for a thousand years. He did just the doctrine just scared the the Jesus out of you. But listen, I ask him, what made him change his beliefs? Because he was the most he ended up being the most progressive preacher and teacher that I knew. And he said he was preaching in a midweek service there in our church in Peoria, Illinois. When he realized in the middle of his message, now this is what he's telling me, that he used to believe what he taught. But somewhere along the line, and this is in the middle of him preaching, this, this all of a sudden he realizes this, that somewhere along the line though, that changed without him even noticing that he had moved on, whatever you want to call it, from those uh, early days. His faith evaporated quietly and hardly without a trace because you go through the motions. In a split second between sentences, he realizes that his faith is gone. Now, this was my own father telling me. I can understand that. I understand because I, too, have been a doubter. And I, too, have been a believer and a doubter at the same time. Eventually, I realized that doubt was a companion. I told you no one's ever going to... You know, we told you earlier. I want to find it right here and, uh, and remind you again. 
that uh, faith is not, or, or doubt is not an enemy of faith. Fear is the enemy of faith, not doubt. Fear. You want to you want to see how this works in a natural terra firma? Look at our look at our government. Look at our country today. It's run by fear. It's not run by doubt. It's run by fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith that is not active becomes fear. Eventually, I realize that doubt was my companion. Every bit as resilient and persistent as faith and who wasn't going to leave, wasn't going to go away. I realized I had, uh, that she had some things to teach me and I decided that I might learn from her since I couldn't shut her up or drive her away. I might as well learn from the doubt. Doubt has become a challenging but effective teacher and a complex but faithful friend. Doubt. Have you ever heard anything like that? I, in this lesson, I'd like to share some of what I've learned from doubt, starting with this. Pay attention to this. Write this down. You and I no longer have to keep our doubts a secret. Some people uh, tell me they never have doubts, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say they're not telling the truth. Maybe they don't. They say faith comes easy for them. At least it has so far. But on the other side, many, many, many of us have doubts, and sometimes our doubts seem far more powerful than our belief. It's hard enough having doubts. It's impossibly hard to have them and feel you must pretend that you don't. Own up to it. It's going to make you strong. Right now, let's grant, let's grant one another permission to doubt. Instead of crucifying them, Right now, let's get this grant one another permission to doubt. And let's see the doubt in ourselves and each other not as a fault or a failure to be ashamed of, but an inescapable dimension of having faith and being human and more as an opportunity for honesty, courage, virtue, and growth including growth in faith itself. I promise you this. There is faith after doubt. There is life after doubt. And there is life with doubt. If you thought life before doubt was good, wait until you see where doubt can lead you and what doubt can teach you. You don't have to be ashamed or afraid anymore. You want to know how to have the blessings. I'm giving it to you right here. Doubt isn't the opposite of faith. It's an element of faith. Sometimes your doubt drains your faith account. So far into the red that it can become frozen. Sometimes doubt is terrifying. I remember a, a drive home from church over 30 years ago when my daughter was just a, a little girl and I, she was either in the first or second grade. And I asked her, so how was Sunday school today? How, how, how did Sunday school go? Now I'll never forget she said, oh, Dad. She said, I don't want to go into it. Now, she's, she's you know, six or seven years old. I, I, I don't want to go into it. I asked what the problem was, and she said, Dad, the teacher 
tried to tell us that once there was this group of people trying to get away from a big army and they were trapped between the army and this big sea and then the water opened up and left them across but when the army came through the water crashed in and drowned all of them and then she had a massive eye roll to accompany her some summary I recognize this as the Exodus story for the Bible and I realized that Ginger had never heard it before and I, obviously she didn't think I had ever heard it before so I asked her so what did you think and she told me it sounded pretty far-fetched now she again she's six or seven years old shaking her head and rolling her eyes again I laughed first because I had never heard her use the term far-fetched before second I loved her unrestricted honesty and third I was happy she felt free to tell her dad precisely what she thought you see many of us still feel as free as my daughter to acknowledge that some of our beliefs are hard to believe come on folks you know let's just let's just be let's be honest about it we go through a transition period of letting go of many things and holding on to a precious few i have pastored churches in peoria illinois east peoria illinois oklahoma city oklahoma tulsa oklahoma buffalo new york rockford illinois and upland california and they were full of people just like you many were raised catholic methodist baptist lutheran presbyterian pentecostal jewish buddhist we can go on but they dropped out because their questions were unwelcome or the church's answers were unsatisfying i want you to remember this this is not a journey but a journey we're on together it's not just your your journey you think you're the only one able to walk or has happened to walk that journey no there are many many i wish i wish i wish that we could take all of the religious garbage that we had been taught in our life and somehow just exclude it from our life but it's it's a part of us because it became ingrained in us but folks god is a reasonable god god loves you more than you can even come close to realizing he wants you today to be well he wants you today to be wealthy he wants you to, to, today to be happy and have joy. Sherry's all excited. I see that. Here's a couple. Sherry, you gave me a whole. You give me a whole book here. Well, there's a couple notes. All right. You've got one minute. Ginger posted her sign, and we have them across the country, from Idaho to Worcester, Massachusetts, to California. That that's what you want. I'm, I'm just getting ready to raise the dead. Well, you you don't have time. You've got one minute. And uh, we did pray for Christine earlier in the, in the show. For the loss of her mother, yes. Yeah. Anyway, folks, I want you to know this morning, don't worry about your doubts. Doubts are healthy. They will make you search. Doubts will... will Put the onus on God and off of you. That way you don't feel undeserving. You don't feel like it can work for you. It can. And you can have the life you've always dreamed. 
And God put that desire in your heart. And he wants to bring it to pass. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time we've had this morning. I thank you for these, these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people that you have to open up their hearts every Sunday for us to give this truth to them. I ask that you touch them this morning. Those that we have mentioned, God, I ask you gave them a miracle. Those listening, let them realize all they have to do is believe and trust. Give them that miracle of finances. Give them that miracle of health. Give them that miracle of peace and joy. And I'll give you all the praise. Amen. You know, Sherry, <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm really happy I had the family I had. Especially Sam. I remember one time, and uh, I, I think, actually, I think he actually made it into a routine. But I remember him talking to us and says, you know what's wrong with preachers? You know what's wrong with religion and church? And you'll, when I say this, you're going to remember it, Jerry. He said they're like Amway salesmen. They got a great product <laughs> like Amway, but their salesmen suck. <laughs> Do you remember that? <clears throat> said, <laughs> said they got a wonderful product. They got God. But their salesmen are crap. <laughs> Somebody said, Bill, you can't end up the service or the lesson like this this morning. I am. Because I, I, want, I want, you know, joy should be yours continually. Continually. I remember we were in Dallas and... Uh, we were getting ready to leave, and uh, Christine Romero, who I love very much. Romeo. Uh, Romeo <coughs> Romero. It should have been pronounced Romero. Romero. Romeo. No, they changed it somewhere along the road. Uh, but anyhow, Christine Romeo, and she, her daughter has a, a show. If they've ever watched Love on the Spectrum Season 2, I think starts pretty soon, but make sure you watch the United States, the U.S., um, the U.S. one. They just finished filming it. So And, and her daughter is autistic. Mm -hmm. And it's about her daughter. And her, actually her daughter is the star of the show. And her, she met a, a boyfriend on the Oh, that's right. David. Yeah. Yes. Anyhow, if you get a chance to ever watch that. But we were just getting ready to leave and just getting into our car to leave. And I asked Christine, I said, would you like me to pray for you? And I took her into my arms and I started praying for her and telling her how wonderful it was yes. for her mother. And she was just just weeping and it, it touched my heart. Folks, there's a lot of people out there hurting. People like Maui. You know, there's a lot of people, but God has what I call the healing balm of Gilead that will... Take away that pain. And I'm speaking that for every one of you. I love you. Sherry loves you. God loves you. And God bless America. Yes. And Sharon Stein, I think I saw your name go by so quick I couldn't talk. And Misty Soper. All right. Mike Boyle says, we all miss Sam. Yes, we do. Jennifer Matthews says, laughter is good medicine. All right. See you all next week. Love you. Do you have anything else to say? No, sure. I'm afraid to say anything else because every time I say something, you, you get all over it. Okay. Have a all great right. day, y'all. We love you.